This how-to video will show you how to manage alarms on your Hamilton T1 ventilator. You can apply exactly the same information when using a Hamilton C1 or Hamilton MR1 ventilator. The ventilator has a comprehensive system of visual and audible alarms to help ensure the patient's safety. You should be able to complete the whole module in less than seven minutes. Before you place the patient on the ventilator, make sure the alarm limits are set appropriately to prevent possible injury to the patient. To review and adjust the alarms, touch the Alarms button. Then just select the alarm control and adjust the value. Keep in mind that setting alarm limits to extreme values can defeat the purpose of the alarm system. Make sure the alarm volume level is above the ambient sound level. In noisy environments, you might not be able to hear and recognize alarm conditions if the volume is not properly set. To adjust the alarm volume, open the system window and then select Settings. Touch Test to check the volume level. And if you don't hear the alarm clearly, select the loudness dial and adjust it to turn the volume up. Once you've started ventilation, you can change the alarm settings at any time without affecting ventilation. For each of the alarm parameters, next to the alarm bar, you'll see the current monitored value. To set alarm limits quickly, you can use the Auto button. All the alarm limits, except for tidal volume and apnea, will be set automatically around the current monitoring parameter values. You need to set the tidal volume and apnea alarm limits manually. The purpose of alarms is to alert you when a patient's condition has changed from a previous state or when there's a problem with equipment. Based on their importance, alarms are categorized as high, medium, or low-priority alarms. A color-coded alarm message is displayed in the message bar. Red means it's a high-priority alarm, and the condition causing it needs your immediate attention. Yellow is used for medium and low-priority alarms. If there's more than one alarm condition at the same time, all the associated alarm messages will alternate in the message bar. If any of the main monitoring parameters, MMPs, are affected by this alarm condition, you'll see the color of the parameter change accordingly. A different sequence of beeps helps you to identify the alarm's priority level. A high-priority alarm is a sequence of five beeps that's repeated until the alarm is reset. A medium-priority alarm is a sequence of three beeps repeated periodically. If these alarms are not silenced during the first minute, you'll also hear the continuous tone buzzer. A low-priority alarm is just two sequences of beeps that's not repeated. The alarm lamp on top of the ventilator is visible from all angles, so you're alerted to alarm conditions even if you're far away or there's a lot of noise. The color of the lamp tells you the priority level of the alarm. Red and flashing means it's a high-priority alarm, while yellow and flashing equals a medium-priority alarm. Yellow and solid is used for low-priority alarms. You can view all the active alarms in the active alarm buffer just by touching the message bar. If you see a red eye icon, it means there's information available about inactive alarms. Just touch the icon to view the alarm buffer, and you can see the most recent alarms displayed at the top of the list. Once you've reviewed all the inactive alarms, press the reset button to clear the alarm messages. Simply closing the buffer will not erase its contents. Information about alarms is also stored in an event log. Try to identify the main cause of the alarm condition and then remove it. Be aware that one alarm condition can sometimes induce multiple alarms. Normally, only one or two indicate the root cause of the alarm. The rest are resultant. Your search for the causes of the alarm condition should be assisted by, but not limited to, the alarm messages displayed. To silence the alarm, just press the Alarm Silence key. 
When alarm silence is active, the red indicator next to the key is continuously lit, and the alarm silence indicator shows you the remaining silence time. The entire lamp is still lit. To cancel alarm silence, just press the key a second time. When you've corrected the condition that triggered the alarm, the ventilator will automatically reset the alarm. You should only readjust the alarm limits in the alarms window if they are not set appropriately for the current conditions. A red or yellow bar, depending on the alarm's priority, indicates the monitored value is currently out of range. In the case of certain technical failures, the ventilator will switch to a special safety mode that ensures basic minute ventilation. This gives you time to take corrective action, including organizing a replacement ventilator. If the technical fault alarm is serious enough that it might compromise safe ventilation, the Hamilton T1 will enter the ambient state. The inspiratory channel and expiratory valves open so the patient can breathe room air unassisted. To exit the ambient state, you have to switch off the ventilator's power. If a technical fault alarm is triggered, you need to stop using the ventilator and arrange for an alternative source of ventilation. If possible, record the technical fault code and have the ventilator serviced. This educational video does not replace the relevant instructions for use. Be sure to read the ventilator's operator's manual, as well as instructions for use that accompany the humidifier or other devices, breathing circuits, and other consumables. Pay particular attention to important safety and hygiene information.